Hey there, everyone. I'm Patrick Ferguson from Skull Splitter Dice, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about a rather strange race. The Harangon are a fey rabbit folk that came into D&D 5th edition as a new playable race with their release in the Wild Beyond the Witchlight adventure in the Feywild domain. So for the love of all things holy, please learn some restraint and keep from doing that bad Bugs Bunny impression I know you're all itching to do, and instead, tune in to this week's episode about the Harangon. The Harangon's traits that get described in the book are brief, and we don't get much beyond humanoid rabbits, descended from denizens of the mysterious Fey Wild. They're lucky, energetic, love to travel, and come in every color and style you can find in the mundane rabbit form or hare form. We don't get any weight or height ranges anymore, so you can really make your Harangon however you please, so long as it's a humanoid rabbit. They aren't exactly supernatural beings like the other new fairy race that we have also done a video on. Rabbits are more diverse than you might think. Just Google rabbit species and you'll get a wealth of inspiration. Make a little brush rabbit harangon wizard or a big gentle harangon paladin based on English lops or maybe a quick-witted jackrabbit harangon fighter. I definitely recommend finding a rabbit or hare breed that speaks to you and designing your bipedal rabbit folk using their animal counterparts for inspiration and working through your character creation from there. I've also noticed that any creature from the Feywild is a great opportunity for players to collab with their DMs in order to make a character that feels more nestled into the story. Harangons use the new 5th edition lineage formatting, which means you get to pick a lot of the racial things that used to be locked in as features. You can pick whatever split you want for your ability score increase, and they don't really specify things like weight, age, or alignment. Starting with your creature type, I was honestly a little surprised that they didn't slap a fey creature type in here, but I guess the Harangon is meant to be only distantly fey. So they're humanoid, which is the standard that won't affect too much. As for your size, as part of a new trend, you're allowed to pick between small and medium when creating your Harangon. There aren't many differences mechanically between small and medium characters, but there are a few to keep in mind. Some of these are pretty obvious, like for instance, small characters can't really use heavy weapons, but they can also find cover and hide a lot easier. You can only grapple up to one size larger than yourself, so medium is better for grappling. You can also move through spaces of creatures two sizes larger than you, meaning small creatures can move past large creatures. You can ride mounts one size larger than you, so small creatures can technically access some smaller mounts where medium characters cannot. For any of you guys that have very specific dreams of riding very specific types of mounts. And that's about it, really. If none of those things matter to your character build, then the choice between small and medium is just aesthetic, and you should go with whatever feels best for your character. Your speed is the standard 30-foot movement speed, though as we'll see in a second, you've got some interesting mobility options besides this. And then there's Hair Trigger. There aren't many ways to gain initiative bonuses in 5th edition, but the Harangon get a nice flat bonus to them equal to their proficiency. Going earlier in initiative can be a big deal, especially if you're scouting ahead or really need to set something up at the beginning of combat. This is going to be a welcome bonus to any character, but you'll find it particularly useful if you're a sneaky scouting character and you need to get them out of harm's way or save some hit points, or if you have some strong defensive buffs to get in before the enemy swings. And then with Laporan Senses, gaining any additional skill proficiency is great, but perception is arguably the most useful skill in the game, and snagging it here for free is pretty amazing. And then we have Lucky Footwork. Adding dice to your dexterity saving throws is already great, but every aspect of this is worded in the best possible way. Firstly, this doesn't use any sort of resource beyond the reaction, so while you can't use it on multiple dexterity saving throws in the same round, you'll still basically be able to use it every time. And to top it all off, you get to add it after you already know that you failed. A lot of features like this make you guess, but this straight up lets you wait until you know you need it in order to use it. Instead, you get to save your reaction and only use it up for the bonus d4 when you both already know you failed. And you know a d4 could potentially make a difference for a powerful spell or dragon breath. And this is one that I'm just glad that's here because it's so obvious, the rabbit hop. Five times your proficiency bonus means that this jump will go 10 feet from levels 1 to 4, 15 feet from levels 5 to 8, 20 feet from levels 10 to 12, 25 feet from 13 to 16, and 30 feet from 17 to 20. That means as early as 5th level you'll be jumping better than practically anybody else without using a spell slot for a literal jump spell. Beyond just covering a lot of distance, the key here is the movement doesn't have any direction restrictions. So a 17th level Harangon can jump 30 feet straight up. 
and it doesn't provoke an opportunity attack either. In combat, you can use this to instantly bound right past enemies without any risk, and out of combat, you can use it to potentially reach heights that would otherwise be difficult to reach or are just inaccessible to every other type of player. The Rabbit Hop also sneakily bypasses many types of difficult terrain, since you're not actually walking through it. This is just a great way for melee characters to dance around enemies and a great getaway mechanic for ranged characters and just kind of strong all around. Since the lineage model detaches the race from the ability scores, there aren't any ideal classes anymore, and you really don't have any limitations on your character options. In D&D 5e, your Harangon character can be a sorcerer, a barbarian, or any other class just as optimally. Every class can make use of the Harangon's features, and there aren't any wrong choices here. I do think that the Rabbit Hop feature can be best utilized by martial classes, using a more mobile fighting style to leap into the ideal places in combat, and by spellcasters and other ranged martial strategies for a quick escape. I've actually made a lot of homebrew rabbit folk myself for my past campaigns just because I really like the concept, and I have to say, Wizards of the Coast kind of just came along and did it way better than I could have ever thought. There's some good combat prowess here, but there's also a lot of room for creating a character that's very you and opening up roleplay opportunities that you can't get with another race. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe because we put out new videos like this every week. And if you're building a Harangon character or have in the past, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. Thanks again for watching. My name is Patrick Ferguson from Skullsplitter Dice, and until next time, farewell.